<laughs> oh, hey, hi. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and once again, welcome to Lisa Says It's episode 53 of the Three of Skeins podcast, because that's our name, because that's our name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lisa. And I'm Chris. Thanks for joining us again. At the Three of Skeins podcast. I have to practice saying it. So yes, I say the wrong thing again. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of day. It's always that kind of day. When is it not that kind of day? I don't know. Okay. We'll, we'll see. It'll be some other kind of day. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before we get going on our regular podcast content... Last week, I mentioned that I have a new class starting. It has dates and everything now. (laughs) So I would like to tell you guys very quickly about the Maker Studio classes that I am doing. And they're going to be held on Zoom. So you can take class in the comfort of your own home, yet still have plenty of interaction. Uh, The first Maker Studio session is going to start on November 13th, and I'm going to be holding signups between now and then. I should have written all these dates down, but I'm going to be doing a live on Friday at 7 p.m. That's October 21st, where I have all the details, everything ready to go. But what I did want to do is just let you know it's coming, it's almost upon us, and I think everybody's going to have a wonderful time. It's really a class for anybody who wants to grow in their making. It's a class for people who want to maybe fix an old project that you got stuck on or find a new project to help you develop a new kind of skill. So I just want to share that brief piece here. And I will be doing that live. We can, I can answer your questions on Friday, October 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern. All right. That's it. On with the show. So, Chris, what's going on with your cocoon? (coughs) See what happened was. It's actually fine. It all all worked out in the end. Like, spoiler alert, everything's fine. Mm. Um, Okay. But I took my measurements for what I wanted the the shrug to be from a a pattern. That was all I used the pattern for, just those, those basic measurements. And I saw the picture that accompanied the pattern. Shall I put it up? Sure. I saw this picture. And if you see in this picture, the shrug comes down to like behind her knees. So I'm thinking, okay, those measurements will give you a shrug that comes down to behind your knees. So I make my shrug and mine comes down to 44 inches, which was a little longer than the one in the pattern. And I have all my square sits together and I have my gray horizontal lines happening. And so I fold it up to try it on. And it's a little bit shorter than that. (laughs) How much shorter was it? It was like, you know, kind of at top of my thighs, top of the back of my thighs, right under my tush. But nowhere near. Not even knees. close. Not a passing acquaintance with my knees. So I'm like, clearly this chick is shorter than I thought. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess I just assumed she was about my height. Yes. She's clearly not. So I had a choice. I could either just have my shrug be a little bit shorter than anticipated. Oh, I could make more squares. How many more squares did that amount to? Well, each row is six squares. So to add length, I would always have to do groups of six. Yes. Oh. So I sat and wallowed <gasps> for a little bit. Yeah. And then I gave myself a stern talking to. I was like, look, either wear it shorter or make it longer. Choose now. And I decided to make it a little bit longer. And I just I just started making squares and just try not to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to just power through. Yeah. Um how many extra rows was that? I, I only made one row. 
Oh, I just made because you know the squares are six inches long, and then I did another horizontal gray line, yeah. so that was going to give me almost close to eight inches longer. Right. And I'm not going to lie to you, it didn't add like a whole lot of length, just because. You know, at the bottom of the shrug, it bunches up a little bit. Yeah. But it is a little bit longer. And when I add the collar, now it yeah, will be just okay. about where I wanted it to be. Okay. But. Surprise. Now, I had looked through that book. And it's a couple of years old. Mm -hmm. But currently, your typical big company pattern will tell you something about the size of the person wearing the item. They'll give their bust measurement and sometimes they'll even give it their height. And I wish that, you know. You wish. I wish, <laughs> I wish for you. Like, I feel bad, I feel bad. I'm the okay. one wishing here. I feel, I feel away. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Because that also affects how much yarn you plan to yes, use. Yes, yes it did. Thankfully, I have a lot of this. Okay. <laughs> I think I have a $2 for ball. I got a little excited about card rid of it. I actually have 10 skeins in each color. So I wasn't worried. I, I could have been in that situation. Right. But I just happened to be, you know, in a situation where I wasn't worried about running out of yarn. Yeah. But yeah, that could have been an issue. Because this yarn is unobtainable at the current time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> but it worked out. Like I said, it worked out just fine. Um it's a little bit longer now. And yeah. I, I last night I just figured out what I'm going to do with the collar because I didn't know what kind of stitch pattern I was going to use. Um, and it was really driving me nuts. I was just like, why can't you figure out a simple collar? It's just not that big a deal. But now I know what I'm going to do. And it's going to be really cute. I'm like, really, really excited about it. And oh, oh my gosh. But um, I can't wait to see. Here is the shrug in question. However, it's folded in half right now because I was trying it on. So I got a stitch marker and I didn't take the stitch markers out. So you just have to use your imagination. It's twice this length. <laughs> <laughs> but I love... But, you see how it looks like a blanket though? Yes, I, I love like that. that. Yes. I really, that, that screams cozy to me. Not the plan. I wasn't... I mean, just because I was using squares, I was like, you know... I thought of quilts, but I wasn't trying to like recreate a quilt or anything because I've never made a quilt. Um, but I don't know. I remember the, I came up with the square just because of the low contrast issue, which this resolved as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you can see, totally see four different colors. Absolutely. But it also just gave me this wonderful fall blanket vibe and just feeling it. And it's delicious. It is quite light and comfortable to wear because the other one was not. <laughs> so it, it's it's really comfortable, actually. It's comfortable. It's cozy. And I'm so far, I'm just really happy with how it's coming out. And I know, like, I maybe sound a little bit surprised because I always am. <laughs> I don't understand why you're always alive. I always go into a project feeling like I don't really know what I'm doing. You know, I'm I'm I have made things before, but this thing I'm making is like my first time doing something like this mm -hmm. and I have new things that I have to figure out for each project and I never know how it's going to go. So each thing I make because you know, I'm not using pattern, it's very much a leap of faith. So when I start to see it moving in a positive direction, I'm very happy, <laughs> like completely excited about that. But, and my projects always surprise me, the, the, the blanket thought, because when I was adding the rows, you know, I had it laying on my lap as I was stitching each row on. And I was like, wait a minute, this would be a nice blanket too. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I love it. Um, it's going well. So next thing to do is collar and sleeve because the it you know sleeve comes down here. So I'm gonna just do something from here to the wrist. Yeah. And it it'll okay. be finished. Is that something you're gonna pick up and do? Yeah. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be finished by next week's recording. No promises. Oh but it might be. Wow. Okay. I'm and sitting here right now with it on my lap. It's just it's me really nice. Impressed. <laughs> I, it's going well. I had that one little hiccup, but 
It's still going. But on. you know what I'm I'm seeing with your project? I feel like every project you do, you're kind of enlarging your territory. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you 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 learn more. You, oh, you yeah. figure things out, and you sort of introduce whatever you learned from the last project into the next project. I'm also getting better at troubleshooting. It doesn't like floor me the way it used to. Mm -hmm. Like it used to be, if something went wrong, I was just like, "Oh well, I'll never crochet again." <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. And now it's just like, "Oh, this sucks." All right, what do I do? Yeah. And. I, I, I'm I'm feeling more confident mm -hmm. as a crocheter, and it's not like it's not like ego. It's just like I feel prepared, right? You know, it's like that first day of school when you have all your supplies in order. You know your teachers, you you know the other students, and it's just like, all right, what are we going to learn this year? Let's do this. That's that's how I I feel now when I start a project. It's just like, all right, what what are we doing this time? And that feels really good to start a project with my stress here mm -hmm. instead of here. <sighs> and it just took time. I don't know how else I could have gotten to this point. It was just yeah. a function of time. And you know, you've done quite a few projects. So each one, like I said, you enlarge your territory. And the year's not crochet. over yet. No. I, I don't, I'm, I'm probably, I think I get in two more projects for sure, maybe three. I really have to start thinking about my Christmas sweater. I don't know what I'm doing. I I just keep saying the words Christmas sweater. I'm waiting for something to manifest. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I have to really like sit down and think about what exactly it is I want to do in regard to that. But so far, it's been, I've had a good maker year. I think so. I've had a very good maker year, and I'm really excited about it. And so far, everything I made this year. I designed myself. This is the first year yeah. I can say that. Oh, uh, a fancy, fancy <laughs> crochet. <laughs> so that that's how my project's going. That's how my maker year is going. How about you? Well, before I jump into my current project, let's talk about what we're wearing because I love this vest. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> This is one of my absolute favorites. You know what? I This vest didn't have a name, but we might just call it the troubleshooter because I had to solve a problem <laughs> in order to make this vest. Um, we went to uh, Allentown Fiber Festival. Mm -hmm. Sadly, it does not happen anymore. And if they started up again, I will be there. Um, and I found this skein of yarn. It, the Brand is Ellen Cooper's Yarn Sonnets. I believe her store is in Connecticut or somewhere north of us. Um, and it was it looked beautiful in the skein. I wish I had taken a picture, but it was just all of these different colors and different textures of yarn all in a little bundle. And I was just like, oh, I need that. And on the last day of the festival, she'd actually discounted it. So I was able to get it for a little bit less. And I got one skein. Um, when I wound it, I made a discovery. All of those different colors and textures were tied onto each other. So mm -hmm. the whole skein is knotted. And sometimes it's like one strand, sometimes it's three or five. And it's done very nicely. It's very artful. I don't think I could have composed a skein of yarn like that. It was mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. But I was like, what do I do with all these knots? I had no clue. So I start just um, swatching and I'm just doing like basic single crochet. And it also wasn't very much yarn, it turns out. But when I was making my swatch, I did two things. I First, I used up the whole skein. And two, I pushed all the knots to one side as I was working. And when I was done, I had a rectangle that was approximately the size of my back. And I was like, oh, well, uh -huh. this could be the back of something. And I decided to make a vest. So this yarn in the front is Cusco Cashmere from Plymouth Yarns, which I love. I believe it's a sport weight. Mm -hmm. And it's like cashmere, merino, and angel's feathers. Okay. And it's just <laughs> it's a skein of goodness. It's <laughs> a really wonderful <laughs> yarn. And so this is just, I just made like a draped front vest. But the back, let me just show you all. So Here's what I'm actually wearing on the inside. And as you can see, it also, it almost gives you like these, I don't know how she did this. <laughs> I believe it's the owner of the store, Ellen Cooper, who does this herself. And 
it's astonishing. But I, when I finished it, I actually realized I really like the side with all the knots hanging out. Mm -hmm. So those are all the ends of where this yarn was just tied on to each other like this. And I'll put it a little closer so you can see some of the different yeah, textures. You just get texture and just, oh. And when I was done, I was like, this is kind of cool and kind of funky and I'm kind of digging it. So I actually usually wear it with this. I can flip it either way, but I usually wear it with this side out because I think this is just really fun and cute. I and thought cool. this was the outside yeah. that you had planned. No, wow. no, I was hiding the knot. So I kept pushing them to one side to get this. Oh. But when I finished it, I was like, hold on, wait a minute. This is kind of cool. <laughs> I wish I could say I had the vision to have planned this. But no, I this was just ended up being how I worked it out. And then, like I said, this this rectangle, this is it. This is the whole skein. <laughs> so I just got, I had five balls of the Cusco cashmere. And I was like, all right, however much of a side of the vest two skeins gives me, I'll do two over here, two over here. And then the last one, I did the collar. And it was like just enough. And what I did was... um. I think a row of treble crochets and then three rows of singles. And so it gives me a really nice drape. And it also mm -hmm. kind of gives you like a, almost a, a stripey kind of effect. Yeah. So it matches the back. And I, I love it. This is one of my favorites. Okay. Ooh, I like this. You sure. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be a cute top. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, and this was, I think this was the first time I'd ever done a project where I mixed two different weights of yarn. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how that was going to turn out because this was sport weight and this was like a big old bulky. And so what I did was when I was picking up stitches on the side, I just did two single crochet in each of the bulky stitches. Yeah. And that turned out to just work out perfectly again. Pure luck. <laughs> like, don't get me telling y'all I'm some sort of genius. It was pure luck, but it just worked out really well. And Looks like those yarns were meant to be together. I okay? think so. <laughs> I love it. It really is a yarn sonnet, though. She ain't lying. So that that's my best. And you all know this top. Yes, this is my outline tank. I and it fits compared to that blue one. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> Every time I see this, I'm like, what? Like, how the heck? I took those drop stitches into account in my swatch, okay? So, if you consider making an outline tank, which I heartily recommend, it's so comfortable. I've been wandering around the house in this all day today. I actually have on a jacket because it doesn't cover my bra. So, <laughs> so I just popped on a jacket for you guys. Uh, but if you do make something with drop stitches, do your swatch and drop the same number of stitches because your swatch will go from by this wide to this wide. It's crazy. And once I did that, the second uh, outline tank worked out just fine. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it was great. And I did this in Universal Cotton Supreme held together with a tensile yarn from Trailhead Yarns. Trailhead Yarns. Yes, they do a beautiful tensile yarn. They're based in Canada, but they ship to the U.S. They certainly do. Lovely mother and daughter combo. They 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 were sweethearts. I like them very much. But and the daughter has a background in forestry. I never met anyone. With that's why the company is called Trailhead. Yes. Yeah. And she only does plant fibers because yeah, she's she allergic has to wool. Bad wool allergy. So if you're interested in plant fibers, and I'm going to experiment and see if this is something I'm going to wear year round. And it's starting to look like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, You see that sheen? That's a tinsel. <laughs> mm -hmm, that's a tinsel. And it feels so good that the two together mm -hmm. feel so good next to the skin. It's like I want to make all my underwear out of it. TMI. Sorry. That was one step too far, wasn't it? <laughs> Just cross the bridge. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, I can recommend the pattern. Beautifully written. Easy to work with. And love this yarn for it. And you don't have to make it in fingering weight if you don't want to. <laughs> but you totally could. You totally could. <laughs> so, what I'm working on now is my niece Rachel's vest. 
So I don't know if I told you guys this last week, but you know, we got vaccinated last week, right? So we were down bad for like two days, I'd mm-hmm. say. Well, the first day was really bad, but the second day was like the recovery day where you just kind of slowly came back to life. But I insisted on knitting <laughs> throughout that process. <laughs> Everything was seemed to be going just fine. That was on day one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't try to crochet day one, but I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. She was down bad, bad. So I'm doing my, my two fronts at the same time. This looks very small, yes. but stockinette <laughs> curls. <laughs> so when you open it back out, it's much more I mean, it is size. small, just not as small as it looks. Yeah. <laughs> so it turns out when I looked at it the next morning, after you know knitting in the fugue, I had knit two right sides to the vest. So if that ever happens to you that you're knitting something that's directional two at a time. I saw her knit it and I was gonna tell her, I don't think you should try knitting right now. But she never listens. So I was like, I'm gonna just leave it be. I don't feel well, I'm not dealing with it. You know how you get to that place where you can't do anything really, but you decide this this is the one thing I can do. And I'm going to do it. So nothing will deter you, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that next day when I'm looking at it, I'm like, why is the armhole on the same side on both of these pieces? And at first, you know, I'm still trying to make it okay in my mind. I'm like, oh, I can just turn one around. But no, it won't be the same. Mm -hmm. Stockinette is going to be reverse stockinette on the other side. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I slipped the one that was correct off of the needle and I just ripped down and happily I had had my um my my markers in place so I you know my stitches were all caught up so I was just able all to small it in as well. yeah just pull it out and knit back and it wasn't even like a super lot to knit back because what happened was I was feeling so poorly and tired that when I stopped that night I was like, you know what? I only have another inch or so to go, but I'm just going to let good enough be enough tonight because my work has started to feel heavy in my hands <laughs> and I couldn't hold it up anymore. I'm just going to just leave it. I'm so glad I did because God knows what else would have happened. But now I have, where am I in this? Oh, yeah. So now I'm just about to start shaping the shoulders. So I'm literally in the final inch of building the fronts of this vest. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna block all the pieces. The back's here somewhere, but trust I have the back. (laughs) And then I'll sew them together because they curl so severely, it'll be much harder. (laughs) You have a tube right now. Yeah, I mean, look, it's actually a tube. It looks like a pair of really long socks. (laughs) Oh, you should totally make her matching socks. That'd be nice. Well, I gotta see if I said maybe do something. But so this is the front shaping, and I didn't like keep a little tally. I just put a stitch marker up the front to mark each shaping, just so I make sure to do the same number. Because mm-hmm. you know, I don't always pay the strictest attention. Yeah, I've had that. So I just did it on both sides. And it said I was supposed to do 11 decreases along the front. So when I had 11 on each side. I didn't even thought to put a stitch marker on each decrease. Hmm. Yeah. Because that way you can just count. I just rip out a lot. (laughs) 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 I'll put it on the decrease and then you can just count your decreases. That's very clever. So now my front is shaped and that's it. I'm going to knit my last intro on both of these. And then block them and sew together. Then I will be embroidering Rachel's label and it will be, and I'll pick up my edges. I didn't try to crochet until day two because, <laughs> you know, I was better. Yeah. And I, you know, did a row. I sewed some squares together and they were in the wrong order. Oh! And I would like so out of it. I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> why it looked it different? Was, yeah. So I just kept like turning it. And I was just like, it just won't go. 
<laughs> and I finally was like, accept, well, I finally accepted that it's in the wrong order and I had to take them out. And as I was stitching them back together, I was like, I don't know why it's right this time. <laughs> but I just, I realized it was That's and I just terrible. kept going. But I was just confused. I was, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. Don't try to craft when you are unwell. <laughs> all, all I can say is I'm glad I didn't, because I considered it momentarily. I'm glad I didn't try to get the flu shot and the COVID shot at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get my flu shot some other time. All my squares are in the right order now. That was like my big fear that I'd have like a whole big rectangle done and there'd be one, one square, square in the middle. Place. Like, <laughs> so I just kept checking and checking and checking as I went Can I tell you, I would have just cut that square out mm -mm. and replaced it with a different one. I know you would have. I sure would have. Been like, But yeah, it's 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 fine. Everything's in order. <laughs> <laughs> You are hilarious. You, I, you know what? It's, I always have like, it seems like I have a very specific fear associated with each project as I'm wor working on it. I'm like, oh, I don't want this one thing to happen. I don't know why. I don't know why I have to invent a phobia for each project. <laughs> Look, I think we all do it. Okay. We all do it. Right. Why do you think I have like all, like all the markers <laughs> and all the lifelines? <laughs> Cause I feel like I'm giving myself every chance. Cause I'm like, I know this can go wrong. That can go wrong. And these two things over here, they are definitely going wrong. <laughs> I think it just keeps you from getting overconfident. You just like realize, well, I could still make a mistake and mm -hmm. you're just trying to be, you're trying to be proactive and get ahead of that mistake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps things out of the no, no corner, you know? <laughs> You had told me about a video you wanted to share. Oh, yeah. Um, so I found this channel. I believe the channel is called Nimble Needles. Yes. But I don't know the guy's name because like, this the only video of his that I'd ever seen. And I'm sure he said his name, but I missed it. Um, but it's a knitting channel. And he did a video recently called How to Knit a Shawl. And it was really good. What he did was he just gave you a basic like recipe for making shawls in a number of different shapes. So just like a basic triangle shawl, different ways, um, kind of like a crescent triangle thing. Um, but he basically, what it came down to, the difference between the different shawls was really where you place increases and decreases. And because of that, it was a really good video, even if you crochet, because he just helped explain construction. He just let you know it's basically a trick of placing increases and decreases mm -hmm. the right way to get the various shapes. Um, so I just wanted to recommend that video. Uh, we'll have a link to it. Um, but it mm -hmm. was really good, really clear. And what he does is for each one, on the screen, first he puts up, you know, he has like the written recipe. Right. And just know that when he says yarn over, it's an increase. <laughs> so yarn over, or I think later in the video, he uses knit front and back. Yeah. Both those of those are, both are just increases. ways of increasing. Um, that's really the only knitting terminology you have to be able to translate if you are a crocheter, but definitely take a look at his video. Um, cause it just, you know, some of these things I had like a general idea and I was going to play around with it, but he just spelled it out and made it very, very clear. Mm -hmm. And if you knit, he also has a, a triangle shawl pattern he has in his video. He shows you a shawl that he's selling a pattern for right. and it's really cute. So you should totally take a look at that. Um, but I just found the video so immensely helpful. And now I feel like a little bit better prepared to try shawling so <laughs> yeah because now i i understand you know different kinds of construction it was just a really good video even though it was specifically speaking to knitters but and you know what i don't know if i would even have looked at the video if i didn't know a knitter and had you know now i've had a few years but i've just heard term, like so i knew that yarn over meant increase, increase and things right. like that so I had just enough knit knowledge to understand what he was saying. Because she ain't about no knit life, okay? Let me tell you. <laughs> no. 
So don't don't feel like oh well she's you know she's around you know knitting. She knew about that knit life. She's not about the knit life. But it's useful because you know I'm always talking about how I don't think there are adequate uh, crochet resources, especially if you want to. What do you do? Sorry, I just didn't know where to put my arm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to sit. <laughs> okay, it's one of those days. Yeah. Um, there aren't enough. Uh, crochet resources, especially for people who want to design. If you don't just want to work from a pattern, I feel like knitting has a lot of that kind of instruction to help you if you really want to learn how to design things on your own or be able to alter patterns. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm learning now to use some knitting resources. To, because it, in some things, construction is just construction. The basic shapes are the basic shapes. Mm -hmm. And you can still learn from those knitting resources with just a, a little bit of knitting knowledge needed to do, like I said, the translation. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm finding that quite useful. Like my mom's been doing that too. And she's felt like it's helped her a lot in terms of learning how to make sweaters. Um, I still wish there were more, you know, crochet specific resources, but check out some of the knitting resources. I think that's a good piece of advice. Like I said, I learned from mom, particularly that crocheters could really use knit resources. When I started reading a bunch of books about construction, that's when I started talking to mom. I was like, ah, hey, look at this. Because that made me realize it's it's just a shape you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. And if it's just the placement of your increases and decreases that creates the shape, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how you're doing those increases or decreases. So definitely take a look. Mom particularly liked this book called Knitting the Old Way. <laughs> and she is a fan of Elizabeth Zimmerman's percentage system. Because she I feels like... That yet. I have to take a look. Oh, yeah, because it's just a way that she, Elizabeth Zimmerman came up with for allocating the number of stitches to each part of the sweater. Mm -hmm. And if that's all you're doing, you're saying this percentage of the sweater goes to the front, that percentage of the sweater goes to the back, and the arm should be this percentage of sweater number. Doesn't matter what stitch you're doing. Not at all. And that's that's what got mom started Mm -hmm. using knitting resources and then I showed her um, knitting the old way <laughs> and she was off to the races and I'm gonna make a note to put those resources down in the description bar knitting the old way and I think the book the Elizabeth Zimmerman book if it's not knitting without tears <laughs> Why are there tears? Because you know what? They may not be crying in baseball, but there's <laughs> definitely crying in knitting sometimes. That is unfortunate. <laughs> oh no. It might be knitting school what is or something going like on? that. Girl. There's there's definitely crying in knitting. Oh, Mrs. Geller, why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all got that. <laughs> But I will put links to those books down in the description bar. And if you, you don't have to, but if you decide to buy them, use the link, okay? We'll get a little kickback from um, bookshelf.org. So, oh, before we get to that, I also wanted to share some uh, entertainment resources with you guys. I have found some really good stuff to work to lately. You know, television's been feeling a little bit wastelandish, but I found a couple of things. Here on YouTube, I just discovered a new to me channel called Just Latasha. She is a prof she professionally does film criticism and she hosts these really interesting film discussions. The one I just recently watched was on a movie one of my favorites called It Was By You and that discussion just opened up that story for me in such an interesting way that I actually went and looked in all of our streaming services to see if I could look at it, you know, through the lens that she's just given me. So check out Just Latasha. I will link it in the description bar. 
I also have been watching, now this just started, I think it's going to be four episodes and I watched the first two. I just started watching Making Black America Through the Grapevine by Henry Louis Gates. It's on PBS. Really, really interesting discussion of how African Americans created their own society behind almost a veil that was not visible to the greater society as a means of survival and a means of finding joy. Wonderful, wonderful documentary. Speaking of documentaries, I am also listening to Rachel Maddow Presents Ultra. Ultra plays almost like a spy novel, only it was about events that really happened. So Rachel Maddow has a great way of telling stories and the story grips you right from the beginning. So do check those things out. I will link them in the description bar. I haven't seen any of those. <laughs> you seen anything good lately? Good? Yeah. Just mm. the good stuff. No. Oh. Okay, because I, I you know it's October, so I'm looking for horror movies. Yeah. It's been it's been sad. I don't know why the entertainment industry has largely given up on horror films. Um yeah, it's been just I watched Antlers on Hulu. I didn't watch that one. Yeah, I don't know how you make a Wendigo boring, but they did. Um, the new um, Hellraiser. Oh, look, Hellraiser it has problems. It, it it's never been particularly cohesive. Um, or coherent. Clive Barker. That's just kind of his style. Is like kind of surrealist. It, yeah. What do you call it? Magical realism. Clive Barker. Yes. I would call it magical um, realism. So I was looking forward actually to seeing this to see if a modern take on it would make the story make any more sense. It doesn't. It does not. Look, if you're into skin ripping, watch it. But if you're looking for like a, a story. Yeah, that was, I was disappointed with that one. Yeah, so I I, I'm continuing my search for, I want to find at least one decent horror movie for the month of October that I have not seen already. Because obviously I know some that I could just watch again. No. But <laughs> looking for something that I have not seen. But it doesn't have to be a new film. It just has to be something that I haven't seen before. So, so if you have any suggestions, if you want to get those, you know, October feels going, gearing yeah. up to Halloween, let us know. And nobody say Hocus Pocus. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Hocus Pocus fan. I still haven't seen it. I can't make it through the first one. So I'm, I, I won't be watching the second one just yet. Yeah. But if if you if any of you guys are cold blooded horror fans, join me. If you if you really loved The Shining, like that's just, what we're looking for. I've just been watching Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Anyone of those you want to recommend? No, they're all insane. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It, I, for me, I watch the planner videos as spectacle just because they're not really planning. They're they're playing with their pretty stationary. And you know what? That's fine. <laughs> like I always say, they harm no one. Yeah, that's fine. But that's usually what I watch about life or she. I'm always looking for something that is is interesting, especially something if I don't have to look at it. Like I really like crocheting, knitting to um Rachel Maddow's Ultra because I'm I can just focus on listening mm -hmm. while I'm, I'm still crocheting. Although I did marathon through the latest season of Cobra Kai. It's the bomb. Oh, <laughs> I did introduce Mom and Lisa to Nailed It. If you I really Netflix, like that. I really like Nailed that. It. It, see, Lisa really likes cooking shows, but she takes them like actually seriously and she like tries to learn things from them and she knows all about like cooking techniques and what have you. Me, I like when things go wrong and when the chefs yell at them. So... <laughs> Nailed it combines the two. Yes. I, I get does. spectacle of you know people being terrible at what they're doing and Lisa gets cooking and she can like correct what they're 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 doing, say what they should be doing. So if you don't know, it's on Netflix and it's people are shown a beautiful cake that they have to recreate, but the three contestants don't bake. And usually it involves some sort of sculpture. They have to like build something with fondant and what have you. And these are people who can't make a cookie. So like it's that. hilarious. People who can't make a cookie, you say? Yeah. 
And so we were watching Nailed It Halloween, and I thought of it because they had to do a Cobra Kai cake. Yes. And one of the contestants was a guy from the show, so he actually had to mold a cake that looked like his own face. It was hilarious. And but, the cakes look nothing like mm -mm. what? Mm -mm. <laughs> nothing. The cakes always have like a person. They always have to like make the shape of a person. Mm -hmm. And what the contestant ends up making <laughs> looks uh, like Swamp Thing. <laughs> there was like a the Witcher one, the Witcher cake. <laughs> you know that scene in the Witcher where he's in the in that wooden tub? Well, they had to make that as a cake. Yes, the example cake was the Witcher in a wooden tub with glossy water and a raven just sitting on the edge of the tub. None of the other cakes look like that. Two of them use uncooked ramen as his hair. <laughs> so if you enjoy. Okay, so that's nailed it Halloween yes, specifically. A and funny take on the cooking show. That's the one for you. But they made them terrible cakes and made one ten thousand dollars I don't know. If I if all I have to do is make a bad cake, I feel like I can do that. Well, they do choose the best of the bad cakes. So you can only be but so bad. Remember the one that the people spit it out? They, they were like, nah. Yeah, the thing is they have to eat it. So the cake usually looks like it's melting. And <laughs> the judges actually have to eat it. It's, yeah, they're bold. It's hilarious. <laughs> that it is. And the woman, was, she's been hosting the show for six years, she said. She's like, you know what I had to eat? <laughs> yeah. she. The one winner, she said that, oh, my gosh, this is actually cake. And the, this is the first time in six years I've actually eaten cake. I'm like, <laughs> although that contestant did say her cake would taste better than it looked. And that was true. She works hard for that money. That's all I can say for that that host. So. And that's the foolishness we've been getting up to. Yeah, absolutely. I, but, but we actually still talk about the name per se. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, many of us craft pretty much by ourselves, so we have something playing in the background to keep us company. So I'm just let let you know there's there's some good stuff out there, both serious and quite ridiculous. So, interestingly enough, both Chris and I saw the same story in two different sources. I usually lurk on Twitter, and you like to lurk on Reddit. Right. So, here's the situation. Someone did a blanket for someone else and gifted it to them and gifted them $120 with the blanket. It was for a, a young guy. I think yeah, he was turning well, 21. Yeah. going Was he going and, off to school or something? That's I don't know. He must have just graduated if he was turning 21. I don't know. But she gave it the gift to his mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the mother said he only likes um, designer stuff. So she took the 120 bucks and gave back the blanket. It did spark a discussion over on Twitter. Me personally, my personal opinion was that that was insanely rude. I was like, oh, wow. Wow. What? You know what? Before we get both opinions out there, put in the comments what you think. And then we, you, we can chew this one up. Okay, three, two, one. You had three seconds to do it. <laughs> Hit it, Chris. Here's the thing. First of all, I have been behind the scenes on some discussions with people making gifts for other people, and they're not always giving these gifts with a charitable spirit. Um, they, I don't know, they feel like they have some sort of maker's privilege, and they want to, Lisa and I have had this conversation before, I think we had it on camera once about the term knitworthy and how I don't like that term. Yeah. Because um, that term did come up, and I was like, ugh. And if you're giving someone a gift, it's because you want to give them something and you want to give, you want them to be happy. You want to give someone something to make mm -hmm. them happy. And it is for them and it's not for you. But when people make something for another person, it tends to become more about the person giving the gift than the person receiving the gift. And I see that a lot, you know, among handmakers and you not everyone feels the same way about a handmade item that you do. Mm -hmm. You're the person who spends many, many hours making a thing because you enjoy this activity and you appreciate the results. But not everyone does, and that doesn't make the other person bad or wrong or not knitworthy. How many 21 year old guys do you know want a crochet blanket or a knit blanket? It doesn't matter. I don't remember what a knit or a crochet like you yeah. should know that the person you're giving the gift to would want such a thing 
And Lisa and I disagreed about whether or not the, the person who made it should have been told. Well, you know what? I feel like he never even got a chance to accept or reject the gift. The mother just handed it back. And I thought that was the rudeness. I didn't even delve into the whole knitworthy thing. Because personally, I think if you're going to make something for someone, you should ask them what they would like. Exactly. What the color should be. And did, did this person? I don't know. So I, I can only assume the mother knows her son's taste. I don't know. See, that is a weird thing because it wasn't yeah, the recipient, recipient. Yeah. who gave it back. To me, that was the rudeness of it. Yes. But I agree with you in that it's not something you're doing for, I don't know, accolades. But you enjoyed making it. It's like Rachel is a child. She asked for a vest. And she was very particular about the vest she wants. Now, if I made it light blue or white, that's actually not what she asked me for. Maybe I like making things in those colors. I can't go with what my taste is, especially once I agree to make something someone specifically asked for. But let's say instead of making what Rachel asked for, you just made her some big old fuzzy vest with a big bunny on it. <laughs> And you gave it to Jessica, and Jessica was like, Rachel's not going to wear this. Is that rude? If Jessica knows, Rachel's not going to wear that vest. She I, don't do I bunnies. Guess, I guess not, because I know Rachel, and I know Rachel <laughs> would not be down with that. Right. You know. So, I I don't, there's so much missing from this story. Yeah. You know, and we don't know the circumstances under which the woman decided to make the blanket. Did she do this on her own? Did someone suggest it to her? Did she have a reason to believe this guy would want this crochet blanket mm -hmm. because it's not the first thing I would think of yeah. to give a 21 year old guy, unless I knew he liked that, that vibe. Mm -hmm. That was his thing. He liked handmade, he liked vintage or what have you. Or he was getting his own place and you know, he has a blanket for your sofa or what have you. So I, I still think the error was largely on the part of the person making the blanket to commit to making something Especially that something on that, that scale large, yeah. without having any idea how um, it might be received. It wasn't a hat, you know? Right. But I think to be a successful handmade gift giver, you, you really have to make it about the other person, not just something you'd like to make and then go here, have, have this. Um, I would let them pick the yarn. I would let them pick the the thing within limits. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't open all of Ravelry to them and say, here, <laughs> pick this. I would give them a choice of things that I know I could produce and I would be willing to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't hate it every stitch, you know, because I don't want to build a curse into <laughs> this freaking thing, <laughs> you know. But I think if you have some... I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think about handmade gift giving? Because I know everybody has a story about something that was unappreciated, but it's the why. And I don't get mad at people who shrink the thing by accident <laughs> because we've all shrunk in something by accident. <laughs> I know I have. I made this beautiful hat as a sample for the and we store all one time. The thing we shrink oh my accident. God. It was gorgeous. And I love the yarn. But I just carelessly one day put it in the washing machine. And when it came out, it could fit on this cup. I made the top sweater to replace a sweater that I had shrunk in. I bought it at a store and just I just wasn't thinking. And it was the dryer, really, that yeah. was the problem. Yeah. And it not only came out shrunken, but hard. <laughs> And hard, wow. And uh, I was like, man, I really like that sweater. <laughs> and that's how I decided to make another one to replace it because I made it the same color as the one I had shrunk in. Yeah, you do that sometimes. Yeah, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Because, you know, sometimes you get into that groove where you just... It's like every things. few years you're due to yeah, just drink something. <laughs> so I don't, I don't get too... Um, fuzzed up over that and the person usually feels horrible and they won't tell you that they shrank it <laughs> but I I do you know I do wonder how we can make our handmade gift giving 
just better for everybody. I good for you as the maker. For people. It's real simple. Actually, I don't make many things for other people. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. Mm. Um, there's so very few my people that I would make for. I've made for you. Yeah. And I've made for mom. And I make for Rachel. <laughs> but my list is mad short. <laughs> Because it does take many, 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 many. It does. Hours. It really it does. does. And let, especially, you know, you have to really know the person's taste and know what they would want. Mm-hmm. Because it's like I've already picked buttons for this thing because I just wanted to add some kind of fanciness to it. But what I'm really gonna do, because we had talked about this too, is I'm gonna get a couple of plain buttons too and let Rachel pick the buttons that go on the vest because she actually knows better what her uniform needs are. And mm-hmm. this is a garment she's gonna wear to school. So it has to fit into her dress code. Although I really want to put those wooden buttons on it. I think they're so cute. <laughs> and and I think there's where the, the rub comes in. Mm-hmm. Because you're doing something as a person who likes to make things. And if you're like me, you make it fancier and fancier and fancier, at least in your eyes. <laughs> and that may not be what the person likes mm-hmm. and needs. So any gifting stories out there you guys want to share? Either gifting gone good or gifting gone bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. What else you got, Chris? I think that was it. I think that was it. Yeah. Guys, I think that's it for this week. Do join me on Friday, October 10th for a live. I'm going to be giving all the details about the Maker Studio. I'm sorry, did I say October? Yeah, I'm sorry, October too. October 21st. Join sorry about that. Join me in the past. Join me in the past, She'll send please. you a link. You know what? I looked at my note, and I saw the 10, and that's what popped out of my mouth. She'll <laughs> send you a link to YouTube three days ago. I know. YouTube three days ago. There we go. If you have questions, you can ask me directly, and I'll be happy to answer. And it'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern. So do set your notifications on so that... YouTube can let you know when it's coming up. All right. I think we're done. I'll see you guys next week. Have a great week. Stay stitching. Toodles.